All right, so before we get started on this course, I need to make sure that you have your system actually set up and ready to go. Um, if you're not set up yet using Django and a virtual environment, what you're going to want to do is go to codingforentrepreneurs.com slash projects and then hashtag setup and it'll take you right here. And these are all free, so you can just go on here and click on any of them and it'll take you step by step on how to actually set up whatever computer you have. And that will get you to the point where you have virtual environment installed. All right, so we'll minimize that. Uh, I navigated on my terminal, either if you're on a Mac or a Linux, you'll be using terminal. If you're on a Windows, you're using command prompt. Uh, I navigated into my desktop, so CD desktop. It, if you first open it up, I'll actually close it and just do CD desktop to show you. Um, so now that I'm on my desktop, it's noted up here and I can also just list out what's in my desktop there. I'm going to create a brand new virtual environment. So virtual ENV and I'm going to call it launch with code. So LWC launch with code. That's the name of the virtual environment that I'm actually going to call it. Press enter up. Oh, Got to make sure you spell virtual correctly. Launch with code. And this creates a brand new virtual environment that allows us to have a self-contained project. So um, when you install new packages that relate to any given project, they have different versions. So I'm gonna show you how these different versions come up. So if I do pip freeze, pip freeze does anything that is installed with the Python package installer, which is known as pip. So pip is the Python package installer, pip freeze allows me to see everything that is installed on my general computer. Not necessarily my virtual environment, but my general computer. Now if I go into my virtual environment, so cd into lwc, that's the name of the virtual environment, and I do, and I activate it, so source bin slash activate if you're on a Linux computer or a Mac. If you're on a Windows, it's dot slash scripts slash activate. And that's how you would do activate the virtual environment there. All right, so if I do pip freeze inside of here, I might see nothing or I might see this. Now, if you have nothing there, that's okay. Uh, but pip freeze shows me what's now activated within this virtual environment, right? So if I scroll up, on my computer's pip freeze. So this is my entire computer. This is what's installed. I have Django installed. I have a few other things that installed. This is an older version of Django um, where we don't have anything installed in our virtual environment. Now this is why you would use virtual environments is because it separates what's needed for your project versus what's needed on your computer. Because any given project might have different versions and if you used a newer version when the older version is what you actually need because of compatibility issues or there's all types of things that can happen when you use the wrong version. Um, so uh, what a virtual environment does is make sure that all of those versions are the same and you can work off of those versions. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, so what we're gonna do is pip install Django and the version of Django we're going to be using is 1.6.5. Now 1.7 is just around the corner. It's probably going to be released soon. Um, this whole tutorial is going to be based off of 1.6. There are going to be minor changes in 1.7. So if you want to know about those changes, you can um, go to codingforentrepreneurs.com and check out our Try Django series there. Uh, Try Django for 1.7. Um, however, 1.6 Regardless of when you're actually looking at this, you can use 1.6, but I would use 1.6 point whatever that latest version is. So if you wanted to click on download, if you saw 1.7 here, you would just go to previous releases on this side and you'll see 1.6.8 or 9 or something like that, depending on when you're actually looking at this. Uh, 1.6 won't be removed for a long time. As you see, they still have 1.4, uh, but 1.4 is probably on its way out. Um, and what you see also here is it no longer uh, re receives security updates or bug fixes, and that's 1.3. That's a very old version of Django. Um, so it do they do still support older versions. So in the case of you know the latest version, there's only going to be minor differences. For the most part, the documentation and the things in the current version you're working on will be very similar to the video. And if you stick with 1.6, 
it's going to work exactly like that. And what you see down here is you can actually change the development version for the documentation. Um, so like if you are going to be working in 1.7, there's more, there's more uh, stuff in 1.7 that's not in 1.6 and vice versa. Um, so definitely keep on with the development version or the documentation version uh, that you're going to be working with for Django. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, how do we actually install the version we want? We just do equals equals 1.6.5. So that's the current version. Um, if I did not put equals equals, it would just install the default most recent version that's out, uh, which would be, if we look at the documentation again, it would be listed right here. So if I just did pip install Django like that, it will do whatever's this, whatever's written on this one right here, the latest official version. It will not install a specific version. So let's go ahead and install 1.6.1. I'm just gonna install an older version so we can see that you can still install these older versions because they're still there. They're still available to install and you can install them and then uninstall them at when any other time. That's what's nice about using pip as well as virtual environments is you are able to then uninstall or install different versions um, that won't affect all these other projects that you may be working on because of those changes in versions. So pip freeze, if we do that again, we see now, hey, Django 1.6.1 is installed. But we don't want 1.6.1, we want 1.6.5. So the best way to do it is do pip uninstall Django. And this way it's gonna remove Django from our virtual environment. So then we can now install the latest version of Django. It's gonna ask you if you wanna proceed, you say yes. Uh, and you can do this with any package. In some cases you can use what's called upgrade, but for a package as big as Django, you want to use um, uninstall. So pip install Django equals equals 1.6.5. And now this will install the version that we actually want to work with. And so from here on out, we're going to be working with Django 1.6.5. Um, and the nice thing about code in general is it doesn't really matter where that code lives, right? So if you have code for Django 1.4 and you brought it into Django 1.6, or in that environment that is using Django 1.6, it's gonna throw errors for that code because there's things that just don't work with the newest version. But the majority of the code will still work because it's still written in Python. It's still code that you can just reuse. Think of it kind of like if you had a PDF document and you wanted to open it up in Word. Well, it might work, but it also might not because Word doesn't necessarily support a PDF document. Now think of that in terms of these versions, right? Now, if Word had a plugin to support PDF, then it would work just fine. But in this case, we don't have that. We have a different version, so the code's gonna be written just subtly different, and certain functions or features won't be available anymore, and Django's great, it'll give you alerts about that. Um, but when you write code, you can write it on a Word document and use it, or, or you can write it pretty much anywhere. You can handwrite it even, and then you can use it in your project later, once you are actually back into it. But the best way to do it is actually just write it with the tools uh, that we're gonna use instead of trying to write it with other things because then it can get confusing or you can have some problems and stuff like that. But the code itself, the actual written code is just like any other writing. It's just something that you can copy and paste and move around. And it, even if you have it in a Word document or you have it in a text document or a, an email, it, those types of things don't really matter because the code itself is still the code that it is, right? So it just the spacing, some of these other things come in and play that cause issues there, but uh, just keep that in mind that that is a kind of important things to understand that the code can be moved and it can be changed and it can be used in all types of ways. All right, so now that we've done that, we've installed Django, uh, you should have already done this before. So what we'll do is we'll now do django-admin.py start project, and I'm gonna call it LWC, learn with code, launch with code, excuse me. Um, and then we will go into LWC, and we see that we have the regular project stuff for Django. This right here, where manage.py is, is the root of the Django project where this folder right here 
is the root of the virtual environment. It, the root of the virtual environment has a folder called bin, include, lib, and the Django project LWC. So the root of the virtual environment is where this is. The root of the Django project is where manage.py is and where all these other folders will end up being. So understanding those roots will become important as we go forward, but that's where we're at now. We've already started a Django project and now we just need to do one more thing, which is Python manage.py run server. So this is running what's called a development server. The, a development server is like pretending to be a real live production server. So development server meaning when you're in development, when you're working on it, this is where you would go and look at it. This is a place to debug, a place to check out new features and try all these new things out. This is where you'll go is to this development server. So we can go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna open up a new page into Chrome. I like using Google Chrome a lot. I think it is a very solid resource for developers. However, you can use Firefox, you can use Safari. I recommend, strongly recommend against Internet Explorer until they come with the latest standards. If that's changed and you're a big fan of Internet Explorer, I apologize for speaking incorrectly, but in my experience, Chrome and Firefox and Safari are usually one of those top-notch ones, but Chrome is my default. All right, so I'm gonna paste in that code that we got, and which was right here, right? So this code right here, I paste it in. Hey, congratulations, you have created your first Django powered page. This is awesome. We are just now getting to where we need to go, uh, but this is where you start. You have to start somewhere. All right, so this is how you run the server. You just do python manage.py run server. You're gonna do this a lot. And to exit out of the server, you do control and C at the same time. So control and C, that cancels out the server and allows us to run it. You can do control C with all types of things to actually cancel whatever is being ran. So if you did another Python function and you did control C, it's gonna interrupt it and not allow it to go. Uh, so control C is a good way to, to kind of cancel or quit whatever process is kind of running. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly, but uh, in general it does. All right, so now that we have this server ran, well, we actually need to have a database and we need to have users and all this stuff. So how do we actually do that? Well, luckily for us, Django has all these things built in. Uh, the ability to manage users as well as the ability to have a login and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is work with their basic administration stuff and also make a basic database, which is called a SQLite database. Now, the way Django comes shipped is we can just run python manage.py syncdb. Press enter, and it creates all these tables. So what we're seeing here is it's creating tables that are actually going into some sort of database. Now think of a database like a big spreadsheet. It's, it's kind of like a CSV file, um, and it has more things to it than that, but just in general, think of it like a CSV file with maybe multiple pages on it, or like a, an Excel book or an Excel spreadsheet with multiple pages, and each table would would kind of correspond to a page in a way, right? So if we had, uh, let's say, auth user, right? So this is authenticated user R, that is a table. So within that table, it's gonna have columns and rows, um, and each row would correspond to kind of an actual person. So we'll see that shortly, but um, now let's actually just move forward and we'll see you just installed Django's auth system but you don't have any super uses to find. Would you like to find one now? Yes, we do want to find one. So I'm gonna use jmitch as a default so I just pressed enter. Uh, it's probably gonna give you your computer's uh, username there. Uh, you can put in any username you want. Uh, you put in an email address, so coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com. It's a real email address, so you can actually email me there. Type in a password, it's not actually gonna show up, but it is, when you type it, it actually does uh, register it. Cool, so we've actually created all the tables that we need for at least the basic admin stuff. Now, if I run python manage.py syncdb again, all that comes up is this, because it's not actually creating any new tables. It's just saying, well, it looks like everything's good. We're, we're fine. It's installing custom SQL, which is, not, which is nothing installing indexes, which is 
well, nothing, and then creating tables, which is also nothing. It doesn't actually do it, see, right? So when it says creating tables, it will actually show you when tables are being created. And we'll talk about where those tables come from or how those are created uh, shortly, uh, but for now, we just kind of want to stop or get, get close to, to where we're going to be. So if I did python manage.py run server again, press enter, I can go back to this development server, right? So I could just refresh in here. And now I'm gonna go into the admin page. So this is something that comes with Django, which is this basic admin page, Django administration. And we can actually go in here and do some admin stuff. So my username was jmitch. And I use a very basic password for when I'm doing development and I don't have any sensitive data on my local computer. There's really no reason for me to, to get crazy about this because, well, frankly, it doesn't matter. I'm the only one working with it. Even if somebody else got on here and saw this, like it's just really basic code. And if they know what they're doing, they could just kind of override all this stuff anyway. So log in and here we go. We got Django admin. This is the admin. This is something that's built into Django and allows us to interact with the database um, kind of on our schedule. But if you are not the developer, so if you have other members of your team that you want to have access to whatever data that's gonna come in here, which we will build, um, they would do it here. You would have them actually go here. They wouldn't actually go into um, a MySQL or a, or a Postgres SQL database they wouldn't actually go into the hard database itself, they would use Django, which makes it a little bit more user-friendly on your end and also a little bit more secure for you um, there. All right, so you can actually add users in here that uh, manually, you can add them all in here. But one thing I do wanna note is Django admin is not made for the end user. So if you are um, looking to actually work with a lot of users, you wanna use this only if you are like staff or or just the super user, basically. You don't wanna have uh, just a random users inside and using the Django admin. It just doesn't make sense. It's not what it's built for. It's built for your staff, your team. It's built for a small number of users, not a big number of users. So instead, what you wanna do is actually build something that any user can, can use. And that's the point of using Django in the first place is to build something that users can use where Django is not something that's made for that specifically. Okay, so we've done a lot so far. It might not feel like it, but we do have a log in and log out, um, as you see there. Now it's very simple, but it is authenticating. It's it's checking the um, that this user and that password is number one a user, number two it's a it's a a proper password, right? It's the actual password. And then number three, that they have access to the Django admin because you can actually limit access. So if we look at my user here, J Mitch, I can limit super user access here or staff access, or even if they're active, you can change their permissions basically. And there's all other types of permissions you can change and do all types of things here, uh, which is cool. You can even update their personal information. Notice that my email came through and I do want to take note, hey, look at this password. It doesn't say one, two, three, like I stored it. It stored it as this nice hash. It's it's So it's basically that it maintains the integrity of the password. So you as, um, any, or any user can't just jump on here and, and just look at the password, which is cool. Um, that's really good. That's better for security anyway. All right, so if I log out um, and I look at our homepage, we see all right, it works. Now we need to actually start apps. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we actually need to go through from here. So we will do that. Um, and we will still discuss all the different little topics here and there, because uh, there's actually a lot to cover. Now, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's continue on and we'll see you in the next one.